All right, went to our famous and favorite Chicom store. Bought a selection of alligator clips, a new cup brush, a new wire brush for the old grinder, because that one's looking a little thin in the skin. I'll convert this to fit in the drill motor with a nut and a bolt and all that good stuff. Finally got oh finally got brushes and a nose cone bushing for the starter so we're going to do some cleaning and getting things done and getting it back together so I had the commutator polished and I'm just finishing up scraping the mica the tool I'm using is an old Lexan cutter and it has a rather sharp point to it what I learned was to do this the reason to do this is to help clean the copper after the commutator has been polished, you'll have some little pieces of copper kind of overlaying the little gap between them. And then the other reason is the mica that is used to set all the little copper pieces here <clears throat> needs to have a gap between the surface and the mica surface itself the surface of the copper up top that helps give it a good electrical contact so that's done <clears throat> you know one of the reasons uh, we who do these type of restorations know so much about our machines is because if we do it ourselves we get to inspect just about every inch uh, every square inch of what we're doing now I just finished cleaning the body of the starter and very interestingly we'll see if my camera will focus on that so D one 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 six zero eleven eight five zero. So that's probably somebody's ID number on the top, and the bottom is definitely a date because these things just aren't stamped like this during wartime production. Obviously, not with a a 50 code so that would be November 8th 1950 is when this uh, starter was last rebuilt I would take it to be anyway it's an interesting note so you know a couple of other channels have some mottos uh, one of them low buck garage says if you're doing it wrong you're not having fun and hodgepodge dodge garage says uh now how about you get get out there and uh work on one of your projects something something close to that so i'm having fun i'm working on my project and i'm making headway it is slow but i'm making headway
new nose cone bushing. New brushes. I've cleaned the phenolic washer that is an isolator. Keeps this post away from the body. This is the positive post. Well, I guess I must have left my gimbal on for the past few days, unattended, because I turned it on to use it, and it started freaking out. So, I had to get the charger for my phone and plug it in. Now it's behaving. It's being fed. So... We shall continue on. Here are the new brushes for the negative side. And you know, in, in comparison, uh, they're not the old brushes really aren't that much shorter. They are. By just a bit, maybe a sixteenth perhaps 330 seconds but you can see they're not rectangular anymore so they have worn do it right the first time later on in the video when the engine goes into the weasel when that stage is ready uh, <laughs> we'll be able to take a look just how tight the uh, starter is down in the bilge so I have to clean these two screws real quick be right back all right so I've cleaned the inside of the housing where the brushes are going to make contact and I have some dielectric grease here so it'll just help prevent corrosion, rust, and all that other stuff. Okay. Hmm. 
There we go. The end cap brush holder has a weep hole in it to let oil out. I don't have any felt in the hole. You can't see through there. It's too dark in here. But you can see through the weep hole. So I have this felt. It's not exactly... Uh, the same diameter it's a little bit smaller but I cut a piece and I put a uh, little bit of um, <clears throat> wheel bearing grease to hold it in place and I'll put a little bit more in there too to help hold it in place while I fiddle around with uh, the brushes this bushing was good and did not need to be replaced. There was not as much play in it as the uh, the cone bushing. So here we go with the tricky. Again, there's a peg there and a slot here that indexes these two. Uh, that indexes the end of the generator, or sorry, starter. Two of the brushes go in. On one side, diff in a difficult manner, yes. There it is. Now the other two, those that's the negative side, and then the positive side, of course, go in here. Okay, now what you can't see is how I have to set the brushes up so they stay out and I can slide the armature in. So that's tight fiddly work, be right back. Okay, it's tough to see, but you can see the brush is raised and the spring is holding it, so once I push the armature into the body all I have to do is give the brush a push down 
and it'll snap into place and the spring will hold it against the spring will hold the uh, brush against the commutator so let's take a look at that as we get her back together gonna put a little tiny dab of grease on the end of the armature Okay. That's done. I just have to be careful <laughs> uh, not to let this thing come apart. Boy, that front bushing is pretty tight, which is a good thing. There we go. While the camera's rolling, I'm going to get the screws to hold the body together engaged. I haven't dropped the brushes down onto the armature yet because uh, if I do that and it comes apart, then I have to fiddle around with that. So.
that's good. That's good. Look at that. We can see that. All right, I forgot to plug <laughs> forgot to plug the uh, gimbal back in. So this is an edit. I have one screw in. I turned the starter around. I'm going to install the other screw that goes all the way to the nose cone. And we might be able to see a few drops of oil come out of the oil cap at the top when I tighten everything down. I can see that it's wet already. That's good. That means the back of the armature <coughs> has uh, squished onto the felt back there. Oh, look at that. We can see it there too, coming out of the weep hole. That's good. Now, I, what I'll do is I'll probably shave off some of this, uh, the smaller diameter, and stuff it down inside the hole there naturally yep <laughs> all right that's not too bad okay All right, be right back. All right, return spring time. So I've put some grease on the fulcrum pin. Dang, that's a pretty stout pin, or spring, I should say. <clears throat> okay. Lock washer. Small nut. Nope, five eighths. It's here. So <clears throat> it 
Good. Oh, that moves nice and smooth. All right. Brushes into place. Very nice. Maybe we'll be able to see this one. And you won't be able to see this one. There we have it. Next is the solenoid. I need to get some small bolts, quarter 20s. There were only three of them, and they're all mismatched. I don't like that. So I gotta find some. Maybe I'll use two of the originals. And uh, we're almost finished. Um, I like it. <clears throat> All right, so I have some Loctite in the holes and uh, we'll put the install the yeah this side we're gonna install the pin maybe that's too far out
that's done. <clears throat> Cotter pin next. Wanting to be a little tricky. All right, cotter pin is in. <clears throat> Splayed it open a little bit. There we go. I have a few scuffs here and there. I'll probably uh, clean it up and uh, spray it again with uh, fresh paint. Okay, just wrapping up here going to cut the felt to try and fit it in the grease cup the oil cup rather wasn't able to fix that spring so just uh a few drops of marvel mystery oil in there Close the cap. I had to play with this copper um, elect electric strip. 
Um, so I did that off camera. That was a little gorilla-ish. So, power in. Power to the armature. Positive, negative up here to uh, activate the solenoid and turn the starter motor over and uh, we'll do a test in a little bit.